Hey guys, in this video, I am going to explain you one very very important concept known as orchestration tools. Okay, I am going to explain you what are these tools, why it is important, and details of one of the tool known as Airflow. Let's see the details, guys. We are going to understand what are the basics of orchestration in the world of computer science. Okay, then we are going to understand some basics of Airflow. Now you would have heard something known as ML flow and something known as Kuber flow. If you understand one of these others, you can easily understand. Okay. So we will understand airflow. Then I'm going to explain you very important concepts in airflow known as DAX and tasks. Okay. Then I'm going to do airflow installation in Linux and show you how to do it step by step. And obviously in the end, we are going to see a Python demo and we are going to monitor the airflow workflow in the UI and see how it is performing. Okay. This video may get little longer guys. I will not give much attention to how much lengthy it is getting, but it is very important to cover all the important parts because if you are a little non-technical, right, then you will not find these explanations well at so many places. Okay. So please pay attention and try to understand whatever we are going to learn here. First of all, what is the meaning of orchestration? Okay. So if you are from non CS background, non computers background, this word may be little new to you. Okay. And if you Google on this, you may find some big, big jargons. I don't want you to read the definition. I want you to think like this. Okay. So let's take a normal use case, daily work use case. Okay. Suppose, for example, unfold data science runs a website. This is a, what is this? This is unfold data science website. Okay. I will write here website. On unfold data science website, multiple users come and they, for example, purchase some course or for example, you know, um, attend some lectures or purchases some PDFs or maybe interacts through, you know, some queries, some comments, right? So many activities are happening on unfold data science website every day daily it's happening okay and what i have is i have my aws environment here okay so here i have my aws environment in this aws environment i have a model running so this red thing that you are seeing is my machine learning model okay so here is my machine learning model what i want to do is once weekly not daily because that much of data I don't have daily. Weekly, I have some decent amount of data. So what I want to do is weekly. Remember this weekly word, guys. This is important here. Activities are happening daily on my website, but I have limited data daily. In one week, I have some decent amount of data. So what I will do is I want to do a weekly prediction, some prediction. Don't think much about what machine learning, what prediction, some prediction on this data on weekly basis. For example, let's say which people will buy my next course also. I want to do the prediction based on the activities. Okay. Using this machine learning model, but this data transfer I want to do weekly. So I am writing here weekly data moves. Where from where data moves? My unfold data science website database. So data moves from website database. Website database can be a SQL server or something to S3. Okay. Amazon S3. Here I have a S3 also. Okay. So this activity is happening. How this activity is happening weekly. Okay. Once in a week data comes and goes where goes to S3. This is my task one. What is my task one? My task one is Every week on, let's say Sunday, 4 p.m., take all the data on the website and move it to Amazon S3, my bucket. This is my task one. Now, what I want to do is I want to make the prediction on this newly come data and this becomes my task two. OK, so what I want to do, I want to do prediction on the new data, weekly data. This becomes my task two. And once the prediction happens, then using another AWS service, let's say maybe SNS or something, I want to get an alert. I'll, I'll just write here alert. Okay. Alert. 
So when the prediction happens, I want to receive alert in my email. So here is my email. Once the prediction happens, I should receive alert. So this becomes my task three. How many tasks are happening here, guys? Three different tasks. What is the first task? Every week, Sunday, 4 p.m., copy the data from Aman's website database to Amazon S3. At the moment, data is copied completely. Go ahead and do the prediction using Amazon SageMaker. That is your task two. What is the task three? Once the prediction happens, let's say the prediction file sits again in S3, for example, then send the alert to Aman in email that, hey, your weekly, weekly, uh, weekly prediction has happened. That is your task three, okay? This I'm explaining you a simple workflow, a simple system. But imagine big, big complex, complex systems in industry guys, where multiple systems are interacting with each other, talking to each other and running many and many data migrations, data pipelines, model predictions, retraining, fetching the new data, real time monitoring, you know, taking care of model drift, taking care of hundred of the things, right? So understand how complex this entire system will become. Now I have spoken just three tasks. The example I gave you, understand how many tasks will be there and how difficult it will be to manage it manually. So how it can be manually managed, just to understand, somebody will come here and you know run a script that pushes my data to S3. Somebody will come and trigger the machine learning model that does my prediction. Somebody will come and trigger the email alert that does my email alerting. But every time I say somebody will do, somebody will do, that is a manual effort, okay? Every time I'm saying somebody will come and do, that is a manual effort. And remember, people always make mistake when they do task manually. Computers don't make mistake. If you set the things right, computers don't make mistake, okay? And that process is called automation. So what if I automate all these things together? There is no manual intervention. So suppose, Something happens, I will go to what is that something and task one, task two and task three runs without any manual intervention. So less chances of error, less headache for developers, less headache for the industry and work because everything is automated. Why I took so much of time to explain this concept is this entire concept is known as concept of orchestration in the world of computer science. Okay. Let me take you to Simple definition where I told you jargons will be used, then you will be able to relate. See here, I have searched in Google orchestration tools or orchestration, okay? And here, if I go to any one definition, right? For example, this definition. Orchestration is the automated configuration, management and coordination of computer systems, applications and services. Just remember one thing, what is, what is orchestration? Orchestration is nothing but automation of your task. So when you run a data pipeline, when you run a machine learning pipeline, you want to automate everything. You don't want manual intervention. And that, that entire concept and that entire process is called orchestration and the tools that help you to do that is known as orchestration tools. One such tool is Apache Airflow, okay? That we are going to learn in detail in this tutorial. Apache Airflow was built by Airbnb. So if some of you know Airbnb, Apache uh, Airflow was built by Airbnb and then it was given to open source community and since then it is open source, free to use, okay? So what are some good things about uh, Apache Airflow and why it is so popular. It's very, very easy to use. Okay, I will just write here. It's very, very easy to use. It gives you an UI to monitor your job or workflow. And it's, uh, you know, pluggable to many different environments. You can plug in many things in the Apache Airflow. Okay, so plugin is easy. Plugin, easy. I will just write here. So, uh, if you understand Apache Airflow, then it will be very easy for you to understand MLflow. Just slight machine learning flavor is there. Apache Airflow also can run your models, no problem. And Kubeflow also more or less same, okay? So coming back to tasks and DAGs, right? So let us understand little more details of what is Apache Airflow. DAGs and tasks, okay? So first of all, I will explain you using our Amazon S3 definition only, how many tasks we have here? 
understand guys what first task is moving your data from my website database to s3 that is your task one so i will write here task one okay task one once the data is available in s3 then what should happen machine learning model prediction should run right i will write here task two so first task one task one will run then task two will run and what is my task three task three is to send the email to me when my prediction is done okay so there are three tasks okay and this is the sequence in which it should run this sequence is important first task one then task two then task three and if you represent all this in a graphical format what you can see in front of you is nothing but a graph then this is known as dag direct directed i think or direct we will check that directed a cyclic graph okay and that is the most important concept in the world of apache airflow known as dags dags means how your tasks are interacting to each other you will define inside a dag what is a task task is nothing but smaller unit of work in your entire dag or entire workflow you can say so again what is the concept of dag and what is the concept of task dag is nothing but a graph for example this simple graph you can see which tells okay first task one will run then task two then task three and what are tasks individual unit of works okay i want to cover few more details before we go into uh, installation of apache airflow okay because it will be easier for you to understand so uh, DAGs and tasks we covered then one important thing is dependencies okay so dependencies dependencies means which task should run after which for example here if i try to run task 2 before task 1 then new data is not available why i will want to run my machine learning model on the old data right i don't want to do that so i am saying task 2 is dependent on task 1 suppose task 1 fails for some reason then task 2 will not run it is not needed right suppose here for some reason my data does not get copied to s3 then why i want to do the prediction i don't have the new data right so i will say task 2 need not run if task 1 fails similarly task 3 need not run if task 2 fails so that concept is known as dependencies okay another concept one important concept is called scheduler scheduler is nothing but you know something in the in the uh, architecture of airflow that sends your tasks to workers workers means where it gets executed so for example here how many tasks we have one task two task three tasks all these tasks one by one will get submitted to the worker for the execution so that is what scheduler does okay and there is a database internal database that will store all the tasks and metadata details of of your airflow components and ui we will anyway see now okay so i will just revise one more time before we go on to the coding part and installation part orchestration tools automation of a larger workflow to make developers programmers life easy and uh, bring down the manual dependencies on complex tasks okay airflow one orchestration tool dag group of tasks with instructions on which tasks should should come first which tasks should come later and dependencies and scheduler is nothing um, just to say which will be executed first which after that db is needed to store all the information for uh, metadata okay having said all these theory guys it's always good to see in the practice let's go ahead and i will go inside my linux box here mm, i'm inside my linux box let me open this and what i will do is i will go to airflow uh, page only i mean airflow documentation and i will take all the commands from here only okay so quick start i mean apache airflow quick start if you see so first of all what we need to do is we need to just give a home directory for airflow i will go here and i will say export airflow home and a home directory so let me go here run this command so now this will become my airflow home directory okay for installation let me go here and specify a airflow version that i want to install because sometimes i don't want to install older version because my python is new okay airflow version i installed python version from my system it is taking which is 3.10 in my case 
And so what it will do is see this code is a beautiful piece of code. It will just extract my Python version. So mine is Python 3, so Python command it will not take. Let me give you a Python 3, Python 3. And if you want to see what is in that variable, right? My Python version will come in that Python version. Okay, 3.10. Now what will happen is Airflow will, uh, this command, the next command which I'm going to give, it will just fetch the correct version of Airflow from the GitHub and then it will install it. Just one one by one command I'm running guys, nothing fancy I'm doing here. Uh, pip install, Airflow and that particular URL, okay? So let me go here, pip install Airflow I'm doing, let me press enter. And what it will do, it will just take the Airflow version from here, whatever we have defined, Python version we have defined, it will take. Since I have installed Airflow, so it will take lesser time for me. It will not take more than few minutes for you also. So let it happen, okay? One package is not installing, so that's not a problem. Forget it. Uh, Control L, clearing screen, Airflow is installed in my system now, okay? So what I want to do next is, I don't want to get into all the trouble of initiating the DB and setting up my uh, credentials of username and password. I don't want to do all that because there is a command called Airflow standalone that will do, see, the standalone command will initialize the database, make a user and start all components for you. So it will initialize the database, which will store my DAG information, okay? It will, uh, it will create a user, admin user, through which I can log in in UI and it will enable me to uh, monitor my workflow from UI and run my DAX also. So just one command and then in the local host, I can see Airflow, I mean in the UI. So I will just here and say Airflow standalone and enter, okay? At the moment you do this, what is happening in background is one user is getting created, one um, user is getting created and um, your UI will become ready, your example DAGs which, which this will give, Airflow will give, those will become visible in the UI. Just wait for a moment. Database will also get initialized and it will give you a user ID and password to log in. So let's wait for one minute and that user ID and password will come. So if you see here, Airflow got started, okay? And it should be available on localhost 8080. So it will come now. See here, listening on, if you see this line, right? Listening on localhost 8080. So if I go and access localhost 8080, I'll be able to see Airflow UI. So here, if you notice here, login with username, admin, and password, this, it gave me a username and password, okay? So I will log in with this password. So let me go to my, let me go to my Mozilla Firefox again, and let me open my localhost 8080 because that is where my airflow is running, okay? So, localhost 8080. Airflow is running here. It should ask me credentials. So, user ID is admin. Password I will copy from there, just a moment. But I think since I logged in before, it is directly taking me to a login page. For you guys, what will happen is, you have to copy this user ID and password. So, for example, Okay, it went. So there was a user ID and password. I should, you can take the cursor back and see that. It will show you a user ID and password. Copy that username and password give and then you will come to this page. Now one important thing is once you come to this page, what is being shown to you is some of the example DAGs. Okay, some of the example DAGs that is Airflow is giving you by default apart from this DAG apart from Airflow tutorial DAG, all the DAGs are example. This is the one I was just preparing for this video, so I ran this DAG. Forget this first DAG, okay? All the other DAGs are given to, to you by Airflow uh, as an example DAG to practice, okay? So, for example, uh, how to see DAG list? So, I will go here and I will open, a, I will go here and uh, for one moment, I will stop the server and I want to show you the DAGs list, okay? So it is shut down. Now what I want to do is I want to show you the Airflow DAG list. 
DAG or DAX? I'm not sure. Maybe DAX. DAG list. DAX list. Okay. Let me try. Airflow DAX list. Yeah. So what it will show you is all the example DAGs that Airflow gave you. Okay. Because till now we don't have any of our own DAG there. Just the example DAG. So where are my example decks? If you see here, user local bin Python, Airflow example decks tutorial, example decks, example decks. What I am going to do now is I am going to move to this directory first. CD. This Airflow directory I will go to directory, and I will create one of my DAG and put it there. Okay, just pay attention, guys. What I am doing here, I am going to this directory. And if I do a LL right, it will show me all the tags. Um, uh, where are my tags actually? LL web server config, login config, provide info. Okay, example tags folder. Okay, I forgot to go inside example tags. No problem. CD example example tags and here. You can see all the example decks. So these are the decks that we're showing you in the UI. So what I'm going to now uh, do now is I'm going to create one of my DAG and put it here. In that way, you will understand very clearly how DAGs work. Okay. Please pay attention to this Python code here that is written. Okay. Only few lines, but important to understand. Don't look at any other files because these are just I have put in one folder. Okay. From Airflow import DAG, I will explain you each line here. From Airflow import DAG, Airflow is a package from that you are importing DAG. From Airflow operator, bash operator, import bash operator. Bash operator means suppose some command I want to run in Unix box or Linux machine, for example, echo something. Okay. And from the operator, you remember the operator will, will run. You want, you want some task to execute that will be executed inside that operator. So two types of operator I'm importing bash operator to execute Linux commands, Python operator to execute Python commands. Okay. I'm writing a Python function here, print world, just I'm saying print world. Okay. Then I'm coming here and I'm saying default orgs format DAG. So who is the owner of the DAG unfold DS? What is the start time 2023 six one anytime? What is the retry delay? So that is nothing but some settings of how you want to retry and how when you want to run. So whatever date you give here, that time DAG will start running automatically because this is all is automation, right? And this is most important part of your script. Line number 20 to whatever I'm highlighting here. What you are saying with DAG, Airflow tutorial V0, I will say V02 because V01 I already created, okay? With DAG, Airflow tutorial, this is name of my DAG. Default argument is what I have defined here. Schedule interval is something to do with my interval when I want to run it as DAG. And then I'm defining three things here. If you see bash operator, I'm using and defining two things. In one, I'm just saying echo hello. In second, I'm saying sleep five. So, and in third, I'm calling this Python function. I will explain you one more time in the notebook what I'm trying to do, okay? It will be easy for you to understand. If you remember, I was explaining you three tasks. Task one, task two, and task three, right? In my current DAG, my task one is a Linux task. My task two is a Linux task. And my task three is a Python task, okay? If you compare with Amazon S3 example, this task one can be a SQL script, right? This task two can be a, let's say, Python script to move, um, you know, to predict. Okay, and this can be a different kind of script, maybe a Python, maybe some other language. Okay, so here my task one is a Linux script. My task two is also a Linux script. My task three is a Python script. Mm -hmm. What is happening in my task one? I am simply saying echo hello. I want to just print hello. And then I want system to sleep for five seconds. So I'm saying sleep five and then I want to print in Python, print world, okay? So if you come to my script, right? You will see that 
you will see that there are three things happening here. Print hello is one bash operator thing happening, which will run in Linux bash. What is the command? Echo hello. What is the task to sleep? Sleep is happening where? In Linux, so bash operator. What is the bash command? Sleep five, so five seconds it will sleep. Third, print world, where it will run? In Python, so Python operator. What is Python callable? Print world, what is print world? My Python function. I have written most simple workflow that you can imagine. Production workflow will not be this simple. Multiple things will be calling each other, okay? And here, this is the sequence. Line number 34 is pretty important, guys. As I was telling you, what you want to run first, what you want to run next. So first I want to run print world, then sleep, and then print world. Print hello, then print sleep, then print world. This sequence, okay? So this is my task one, then task two, and then task three. This is my definition of DAG and my DAG file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this entire thing and place in example DAGs folder. Now, in real world, you will not place in example DAGs folder in production scenario. You will have your own DAGs folder. But here for demonstration purpose, let me put in that folder one of my DAG. So copy. Copy. Go to command line. And I'm inside example DAG. So I will create a file vi aman DAG dot py. Okay. And I will say insert. And I will paste my code here. Okay, my code is pasted. Escape colon WQ just to test if it is what I was expecting. So this is what I was expecting. This is my DAG file. Okay. Now this is my DAG file, which is inside example DAG. So if I restart Airflow again, then it should come in the UI. Let's see that. So I will go and say Airflow standalone that command again. Airflow standalone. Okay. Let it initialize again and username and password remain same. Don't worry. We will go and run that DAG and I will show you how automatically it is running all the tasks that has been given without any user intervention. If you set the time, it will it will run in that time. Okay. It will if you set the frequency, it will run in that frequency. So let, let it start. Localhost 8080 and DAX. I will go to that directory. That URL page cannot be found. Return to main page. DAG import errors. Do not DAG import errors. Some issue is there. Shall I re-login? Because I'm expecting one more DAG here. Some error is coming. Let me try to see what is this. User log Python day, Aman DAG file, most recent last calls. What is the broken DAG? Uh, Python callable must be a param. I understood what the problem is, okay? So basically I had changed something here. Let me, let me edit the file. Let me edit the file. I'll show you what is wrong here. Actually in the function call, right? It is not expecting me to put parenthesis. So you see here, I'm calling a Python function here. Okay. And here it does not expect me to put a parenthesis like this. So I should, I should remove that parenthesis basically. So I'm doing it here, but I should do here only directly in VI editor. I will do that. Let me stop it. This DAG is now corrected. Uh, so I removed that parenthesis from the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my browser UI to see if uh, my standalone is importing all the latest DAG without any problem. So Airflow standalone I will run and I will check in the UI. Refresh my UI to see that if things are as expected. Okay. So after I edited my file, I just reran the DAG from this button. Okay. So I just said that rerun my DAG. And once I do that and I go inside my DAG here, right? Airflow tutorial V2 is my DAG, which is triggered now. And I will show you how different tasks are running here. So for example, here, let me go inside my task view graph. Okay and we will see one one task. So how many tasks we have three tasks. Okay, let's see what is the status of all these. 
so it will load here and if something is running or successful it will it will show us like that so now i think everything is successful here so what is our first task print world so if i take my cursor here you can see started when it was started when it end then i will click on this and i want to go to the logs to show you how it is outputting what we are what we wanted to output okay so let me go to the logs here and in the log you will see that what we wanted to print through that echo command if you remember so here if you see echo hello okay echo hello is what we wanted to print so this is the uh, this is command running is the this is a bash operator so this command is running in the bash so as you can see user bin bashed and this is the command that is running okay and here this in this way it will print you entire log so here this is my output hello okay hello is my output this is for our task one similarly if i go on to my task two you can see that the command it is giving the command it is running is basically sleeping for five seconds that i give okay so here if i go to log so this is a simple simple task in the log we can go and see but suppose it is some database updation something see here the command is running is sleep five okay output is nothing because sleeping five it does not produce any output okay so it will sleep for five seconds means wait for five seconds and in the end the python task is running same way you can go to the logs and you can view the output in the python task as well okay so what has happened now guys we have created our own first custom DAG. we have added three tasks in that and then our DAG is running successfully in airflow ui you just saw how simple is the installation and how simple is the process okay so please go ahead and try installation try creating a DAG and try running some tasks it will help you a lot in your orchestration journey and productionalizing machine learning okay as i told you uh, next run previous run how much schedule you want to run which day of the week you want to run what time you want to run all, all these things can be scheduled here okay so i leave it to you to practice a little bit more on this and remember this is an important concept hence i covered it here okay please give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video i'll see you all in the next video wherever you are stay safe and take care